I'm uh, Martin Andresen, and I'm here to tell you about the mixing desk of LARP. Last summer, I was part of uh, organizing something called the LARP Writer Summer School, which was, to our knowledge, the first ever organized school in LARP organizing. Uh, this was organized by Fantasy Funne last year, and I was part of the organizing group. And what we did was that we gathered around 40 participants from 10 different countries outside Vilnius in Lithuania. And we wanted to teach them how to make LARPs. We wanted to teach a bunch of young, relatively inexperienced LARPers how to make high-quality educational games in five days. Even with an excellent team of 15 of some of Nordic LARPs' best experts, how on earth do you do that? This, or... Actually, this is Marcus Montela's PhD thesis. He's a, he's a game researcher. And... Uh, LARP design and LARP theory is very complicated stuff. There's been game researchers here today before me, and there will be more later. I will not say anything bad about them. They are magnificent people, but this is hard. And if you're familiar with the Knutpunkt scene, these are only a few of the terms that you will come across when you discuss LARP theory or you dis discuss LARP design. There's plenty of excellent LARP theory, but what you need to know when you're a beginner LARP organizer and you're eager to to start to make a game is not to read a PhD thesis. Uh, this is really cool that people are doing this, but it's maybe not directly ap applicable for a, a beginner organizer. So in essence, what we wanted to do at the LARP Writer Summer School was that we tried to teach this to these people. And these are my favorite participants ever, but they were relatively inexperienced. Some, most of them had played some LARPs, but there were some who hadn't even played one single LARP when they came here. Uh, and many game designers are more or less basically self-taught. Uh, there's no school you can go to to learn game design, and we think that makes many game designers do the same mistakes all over again. Uh, so what we did to try to remedy this was that we made something we call the Mixing Desk of LARP, which is a pedagogical framework for thinking about practical LARP design and for teaching practical LARP design. We believe that this framework will find its place somewhere between the PhD thesis of Marcus Montala and you know, the, the practical art of organizing, organizing and making LARPs. There's a black room in there somewhere that needs to be filled. Uh, and we think that this framework can help to structure all the different things and all the different choices you have to make when you are designing uh, games. We also believe that this framework can be useful uh, to creative processes in other fields. Anyway, the basic idea is of the mixing desk of LARP is that the LARP designer is a bit like these people. Just like uh, these light or sound technicians, I don't really know what these people are, but they're technicians. Just like they are just adjusting the faders and buttons of this mixing, this mixing desk to adjust the volumes of different frequencies or the strength of different lights or colors of different lights, that will affect the performance. In the same way as a LARP designer, adjusting the faders of the mixing desk of LARP will affect the perf performance or, or the LARP, actually. So on the mixing desk of LARP, we have structured what we believe to be the most important design choices of Nordic LARP in 2013. In essence, what we did was that we created this. These are the participants of the summer school, hopefully using this framework to create their LARPs. Uh, the mixing desk of LARP is a tool for visualizing la the LARP design process and visualize all the choices that you have to make when you make LARP. But what are these faders anyway? On a normal mixing desk, a fader is a sort of a, a sliding scale that goes from a minimum point to a maximum point that you can adjust it anywhere along this, this, this scale. Uh, how does this work on the mixing desk of LARP? Well, let's do an example. This is one of the faders of the mixing desk. We call it <coughs> openness, and as the name suggests, it describes the degree of openness in the game. Are there secrets of the characters? In most games, the characters have secrets, and if they do, are these secrets also to the players? Or do the players share these secrets before the game or during the game? If the, play if the secrets are shared, th it makes it a lot easier to, to, to play upon each other's drama and to strengthen the drama. But then again, it will ruin any real surprises. 
for the players. In this way, a fader describes the room for a particular design choice in a LARP. This, this fader goes from secrecy to transparency, uh, which are the two extremes. We're not saying that one of them is better than the other, we're just saying that this is a really convenient way to express the design choice you have when it comes to deciding between secrecy and transparency. So, why should you use this mixing desk of LARP when you want to teach LARP design or talk about LARP design? We believe that this tool has four main pros. It's a way to teach LARP design to beginners. If there's any pedagogues here, they will know that, that it's really, really handy to structure complicated fields in a visual way. And that's exactly what the mixing desk does. LARP theory is complicated. If you structure it in a visual way, it's easier for beginners to grasp what you're trying to teach them. Second, we believe that this framework visualizes the, the opportunities that you have in LARP design. It visualizes the room that you have to choose between when you're a LARP designer. And when you lay all the faders out on the mixing desk of LARP, we think it makes it easier to see what different choices you have. Third, and maybe more importantly, is what uh, Lars before me was talking about. We all have default positions. Whether these default positions are determined by your personal preferences or by, by the tradition of your community or, or something else, we all have common ways to do things. And for some design choices in LARP, not taking a decision is also taking a decision. If you don't take a decision, some sort of default decision will be implemented for you. For example, in Norway, if you don't state anything about characters, then most players will assume that the organizers will write and distribute characters. And we think the mixing desk framework makes it easier for people to be aware of their own default positions, because they differ. And if you're aware of, them, aware of these default positions, we think it's easier to make conscious LARP design. Last but not least, we believe that this framework is very flexible. Uh, we have picked out 11 faders that we think are the most important design choices in Nordic LARP uh, in 2013. We expect and welcome debate about this. We are most certainly not right about the choice of these 11 faders. Here are some of them, by the way. I don't have time to go through them all, sadly. You can read about them on the Nordic LARP wiki or uh, in the Knutepunkt book. But the main point here is that the mixing desk of LARP is flexible. If you don't like our faders, kick them out and put in some of your own. Um, these are the other half, by the way. And, and this way, we think that the mixing desk is a flexible framework where you can fit in the faders that fit best with your sort of, with the games that you design and make sense to you. So, that's more or less what I wanted to say about the mixing desk. I hope that you find this way of thinking, this framework for organizing thoughts and teaching LARP design useful. If you want to read more, check out uh, the Nordic LARP wiki or read a very short article in the Knutepunkt book. Thank you for listening and happy twisting with the mixing desk.